Today we're going to be talking about Faction Warfare. Now Faction Warfare here in Albion Online is a unique activity that both players that enjoy PvE as well as PvP and it's a really good way to get your feet wet starting in the game as well as really good content that if you get to higher levels can benefit you in very profitable ways from silver all the way to a lot of tomes of insight that you can use to upgrade your account. Now what we're going to do is we'll just talk about what faction flagging is. Faction flagging is the act of signing up for your city to fight for them in the faction warfare that goes on in the royal continent this isn't a black zone activity this is a yellow and red zone activity and if we open up our map here i do have it on faction warfare mode but i'm going to turn it off for a second we have bridwatch martlock thetford fort sterling we have limhurst as well as we have carleon now if we go to the faction warfare view we can see what regions are controlled by who now carleon doesn't control these regions right now as martlock bridgewatch limhurst will push out but there are different events and things that can go on within this and now that we have this open i'm just going to talk about it here for a second so we have the different factions so all these are all the different factions that you can sign up for there's six different ones as well as we have faction outposts this is a symbol when they're under attack we have the value of the region which will show inside the map bandit assault is an event that we will be talking about later in this video and the other ones just talk about the connectors for when you are capturing different zones which i will talk about when i go into the activities part so the first thing that we are going to go into though is the how to faction flag so when it comes to faction flagging if we open up our map i am in fort sterling and if we zoom in here we can see that there is a faction enlistment symbol now mine is a white flag with a silver hammer that's going to be the symbol for fort sterling but if you go to another city so if we go up here to thetford i'm going to put no map and click on thetford and i zoom in there's is going to be the purple flag and it says faction enlistment you can see the flag on the map for faction enlistment and we're going to run over there right now i also brought my faction elite mount so each mount does have special abilities. The tier 8 mounts have special abilities in Faction Warfare. So you can bring them out in yellow zones to benefit people that are doing them. But we're going to go up to Faction Enlistment. And it's going to be the NPC that is standing right here. We're going to click on it. So we have Ironheart here. And we have in Faction Enlistment as well as Faction Flagging. PvP results in Knockdown in blue and yellow zones. And then in red zones, it results in full death. So that is full loot PvP in red zones. Red zones are still going to remain full loot PvP. When it comes to running around in other zones, all of the other factions that are flagged can attack you. So you do need to keep that in mind when you are seeing them. They may try to kill you for faction points as they do get rep and tokens for that. The next one we have is the faction items. These are the different items that you can buy from the shop. And I'm just going to kind of go through this with you real quick so we are going to talk about the benefits of faction flagging and this right here is one of the big ones we do have the faction items shop so right here i do have tokens that i built up from doing faction activities and you can buy mountain hearts which mountain hearts do have a market value of around 50k most of all the hearts are around 50k and they only cost 3,000 tokens you have an iron campaign chest which can contain tomes of insight which can give you fame to help you level up your different items we also have the different crests that you can use to craft the cake i've never really messed with those as well as you can claim a winter bear cub to raise on your island as well as an elite winter bear cub you do have to get the paladin rank to be able to buy this as well as the banner but that is for elite faction grinders essentially people that grind out faction warfare a lot to get these unlocked so it just shows your dedication this is the rewards that you can be getting for this too as well as once we flag up so we are flagged now and it's going to show on our mount. So we do have the faction symbol on our cape as well as on our mount. Everything is Fort Sterling decked out. We can come back to her and we can do trade missions to different locations. We will have to pay the hearts to do these contracts, but they do give you rewards. So if we do take, uh, let's say that we take this to, uh, we got a vine heart contract to Thetford. So we're going to take 15 hearts from here and we'll get rewarded with 18 vine hearts. So market value of 900k. We're getting three more out of that as opposed to to having to pay 15 so you're making about 150k off of doing those contracts you can do those as well as there are other benefits from faction flagging so if you take a look next to your mailbox you have an activities tab now you're going to click on that and you're going to go to faction warfare now this is going to be the monthly challenge for faction warfare it operates the same way as do the adventures challenge so the adventure challenge here you get these unlocked for doing different activities and getting keys and once you get these unlocked you can unlock the crates now the same applies to faction warfare there's gonna be four different crates that unlock the same time the 
adventure challenges do. Right now I have six days left to complete these crates and they're actually not that hard to get done. You can do these in a couple days if you get out and faction flag and I'll show you how to do that. As well as there are daily rewards for participating in the factions war efforts. So you do get, uh, it helps you rank up and level up your person right here. On the very bottom you can see, well in the middle you can see the stats for how each faction is doing. But on the very bottom you can see your actual rank. So I'm a zealot at the moment and I'm working my way towards crusader. And I do get faction bonuses for my current rank. I get 20% more bonus as well as 108% and premium does increase everything by 50% so premium is a really beneficial to have when running faction warfare so right here is all of the statistics of the faction warfares that I've been running. I'm up to 772k points. I have been spending them. As you can see here, I only have 4,487 points left. But you can spend those at the shop for different chests and whatnot. As well as when you do claim these, they are higher levels of the iron campaign chest. So on the very end, we have a gold campaign chest. And they have pretty good rewards in it. The tomes of insight are amazing in them. And sometimes you get a good amount of money, 100k plus in them most of the time. So another benefit from faction flagging that you're going to want to be doing is is you get an XP bonus when you're outside. So let me run outside the door here and I'm gonna show you guys how it would go if you wanted to get out and actually participate in Faction Warfare. So we are outside one of the zones of Fort Sterling at the moment. I'm gonna move my map over here, I'm really zoomed in. So we're only one zone out. And as you can see, we did get a faction flagging bonus of level 1, and we received 5% more fame, silver, and loot for participating in your faction's war effort. Now, what that means is that anything that I mine, anything that I, any mobs that I kill, any kind of activities I participate in, as well as the silver that I'm picking up, I will be getting 5% more at this time. Now, the max that this can go to is 15%, and the way that that works is you have to be three zones away from Fort Sterling. So if I move to here and to here, I'll have 15% bonus in this zone. If I move all the way to here, I'll be have a 15% bonus. I get 5% here, 10% here, 15% here, and the max is 15%. So if I move here, I'll still have 15%. Something you have to look out for though, let's say I go here and I go through this tunnel. I'll have a 10% bonus here, but if I go here, I will lose my bonus. I'll lose my whole bonus because there's no Fort Sterling base camps here. We need to have this. We need to have control of the connecting zone that we are getting the bonus in. So if I move down here, I will not be getting any bonuses at all. So that's something to keep in mind when you are trying to go out and use these bonuses. The bonuses do apply to gathering. They apply to clearing mobs. So if you want to do open world farming in yellow zones or red zones, being faction flagged will give you a lot more points. If, if you do want to do farming in the yellow zones and open world mobs, I do highly suggest faction flag and trying to get that 15% more XP. It's gonna be really good for helping you to level up and get your stuff done. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is the outpost. So I don't know why this is just so zoomed in, but we have an outpost right here. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna run up to the outpost. And this is a Fort Sterling outpost. So there's gonna be a boss in the inside. This is the Fort Sterling boss. But if we go to another map like the Limhurst one, there's going to be a Limhurst boss inside of here. And what will happen is faction warfare anyone that's flagged will usually group up there are some faction warfare discords that you can join this is an outpost that you will essentially clear and then you stand in the circle it will dissipate and then it will fill up once you kill the boss inside of here and it's capturing you don't have to stand in the circle unless no one else is standing in the circle to capture it. If, if like five people are staying in it and you leave, you're still going to get the points. If you're mounted, you'll still get the points. If you're dismounted, you'll still get the points. As long as you contribute it to the fight in some way, the this color closes and then your faction takes over, you will be getting points for it. You don't have to stay in that circle. So if there is a huge group and a lot of them are staying behind the cap, it, you can start working your way to the next point. Because a lot of times the faction warfare groups will start moving from zone to zone on these outposts and start clearing them. And then they'll start going to the next one into the next one now this is going to be the best way that i recommend finding uh, faction warfare activities to get into and if you are just starting out i recommend doing yellow zone faction warfare activities just take some 5.1 6.1 if you do get knocked you'll just have the repair bill and you come out faction flagged and what you do is to find so if we're going to go from fort sterling to find a group that's out there clearing stuff right now so i'm going to follow the fort sterling line and it looks like Fort Sterling is working on Drown Horse Bazin at the moment. And the reason I know that is because we have three Fort Sterling outposts here, and then we have two Thetford that are getting captured. So we know that Fort Sterling is pushing through this zone. Now, if there was two Thetford right here and these two were getting captured, we know Thetford is in this zone capping. So what it looks like is Fort Sterling is over here, the big group is over here, and they are capping these zones. 
and they're probably just pushing through this is probably the end of their their campaign that they're about to do it's just a group that just got together a lot of times you'll run i'll run all the way over there i'll find the group that's clearing them and i'll type in the chat hey can i get an invite to a party if no one invites me i'll start inviting people to make my own party the more people you have in the party the more points you'll get because everyone that's in the party that's contributing to the fight of clearing the outpost will be getting points for it a lot of times i will and you can see there that fort sterling just actually captured one of these i will go as a healer too so if you aren't wanting to go in a group if you do go as a healer and you have a lot of aoe heals healing is one of the best things in faction warfare because every person that you touch with heals you will get credit for the fight now those are the outposts and the main system that you're going to want to be doing when you do faction warfare now there is a another thing that we want to talk about and it's called the bandit event now there's no bandit event going on but it would pop up right here on top of the map and what the symbol would look like if we go back to faction warfare is it's going to look like this it's called bandit assault now there'll be a countdown timer before it starts and then when it does go on it goes on for one hour or 60 minutes and what it does is every red zone in the royal continent so let's just turn this back every red zone in the royal continent is going to turn into bandit camps and when they get turned into bandit camps what happens is you want to go out during this event in a group into the red zone so i would take like 5.1 some set that you're not worried about losing just take like an armored horse don't take any expensive sets out there if, especially if you're running solo it might be hard to get into a group because a lot of times people that are running bandit events they are in a discord and they're coordinated so sometimes it's really it's really the play to try to get into those discords if you're really into running a lot of faction warfare these are going to get bandit camped up so there's going to be they're going to look like this they're going to look like this outpost can't be captured they're going to look like this they're going to kind of look like the carillon flag and they're going to be part of the bandit event so what happens is for example fort sterling will go out bandit event will start and they'll pile through here as a group and they'll start capping these one at a time the the more bandit camps that you clear during the event the more points that you'll get dropped for the end of the event so not only do you get points for capturing an outpost but once the zone the whole zone is captured you'll get points and then at the end of the bandit event after the 60 minutes are up any outpost that you captured any player kills that you got will all pile up and they'll dump a lot of faction points on you that you can use for again the reward system on top of that at the end of the week on sunday when the utc timer gets reset you're going to be getting a weekly faction report and what it shows it is it shows the amount of points that you've earned and then it shows your faction standing how much you leveled up with that as well as all of the outposts you captured rival players you've knocked down rival players you've killed and times that you were knocked down or killed during faction activities again you get a 50 percent bonus if you do have premium on top of that, you get bonus points received for how much work that you did do in the, and I don't, I don't know the exact percentage on it, but you do get at the end of the week, you get a huge drop of, so if you've been doing faction warfare all week, you'll get a huge drop of points towards your faction warfare efforts that you can use in the reward shop again. That's going to be it for the video, guys. I hope you did enjoy, and I hope you now know how to get started with Faction Warfare from flagging the reward system, as well as getting out there and start working on some Faction Warfare for yourself. Now, this video was meant to be a little bit shorter and just a beginner guide to get you started with the Faction Warfare activities. They are a lot of fun and really good for new players and a really good way to make money. You can make up to 400 to 500k per hour with just buying the hearts if you are grinding these out for the points, even in yellow zones when you try to find a group. But at the end of the day, this is a really good activity for new players intermediate and veteran players alike that do want an activity to do in here in albion online there's a lot of people that are hardcore into faction warfare and you can be too if you do join any of those discords you can try to talk to some of the other faction members that you see running these events and ask for a discord i'm sure one of them will help you out and get you in there other than that if you guys did enjoy the video make sure to leave a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video and i'll see all of you in albion online